Welcome back to TechQuest TV. My name's Kelly Lewis. I'm president and CEO of TechQuest Pennsylvania, and I'm excited today to be live from Harrisburg University. We've got a, a great show, and our next guest is Dr. Renee Massengale. She's the director of the Food Science and Technology Center, and some other things. I mean, your title is bigger than our last guest. <laughs> I'm not sure about titles, sometimes those are overrated, but I do want to give you some information and background knowledge about the Food Science and Technology Center and the things that we do there. Well, I figured like the longer your title, the smarter you are at this <laughs> university, because I saw your bio quickly, it's amazing. Well, at Harrisburg University, I've had the real privilege to be able to come and, and build programs based on a combination of background areas and expertise that I've developed over the years. One of those areas is in food safety and quality. I am a food safety and quality microbiologist. I also do research with um, consumer testing with uh, food and other types of products. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? Like you test food and see if it's good and bad and tastes good or has diseases or? All of the above are areas that we're interested okay. in. Through uh, the University Food Science and Technology Center, we're interested in three key things. First of all, we're interested in supporting student education in addition to um, supporting industry. So that first piece is student education. We have an excellent undergraduate research program in food safety and quality. Students can come to the university um, uh, and enroll in a biotechnology degree program where they focus and concentrate in food safety and quality. In partnership with that, we have a professional development training program in which I partner with other staff and faculty in the institution to offer certification courses in a variety of areas, including food safety and quality, which be, due to the recent Food Safety Modernization Act passage, is now a key priority in the field. And also in the area of what we call sensory science, which we'll be talking about. Sensory science, so mm -hmm. that means you're putting sensors in food. It We're sounds like that. Chain. Actually, uh, biosensors are a key um, emerging aspect or technology of being able to monitor the safety and quality of food real time. You may have heard of some of the uh, news reports and research reports about labels or edible biosensors. Um, those are also used in manufacturing everywhere along the farm to table continuum, um, from production of foods through processing to manufacturing and beyond. And my colleague Dr. Lena Patterkini researches uh, and does work in those areas with me as well. Excellent. So, so as we mature through this, the center, you'll help farmers protect their food supply better and then consumers will know with more confidence that the food they're eating is of a great quality. That's right. So one of the things that I like to tell folks both at the institution, in classes, um, when I speak publicly and when I work with companies, is that food safety and quality is everyone's responsibility. It's the farmers, the food processors, the manufacturers, and even the consumers have a responsibility to manage and, and process or cook that food in a safe way once they get it to their homes. It's everyone's responsibility in that pathway. At Harrisburg University, we teach students about that farm-to-table continuum, what their role can be as scientists in terms of supporting farms in producing um, produce and fruits and vegetables that are safe to eat. Um, we have one student this summer who's working on a project in the area of good manufacturing practices. She's working with a local nonprofit farm to help them develop food safety plans for the products that they produce. I have other students that are working in the second part of the Food Science and Technology Center, which is a laboratory called the Consumer Insights Research Laboratory, or CIRL. And in this laboratory, we train and mentor students while we're also providing a very critical um, resource for industry companies in the region. Excellent. So you may be able to help me. I always wondered why they don't put the labels on the things that say once you open it, to all, the, especially the guys in the world, once it says refrigerate after opening, but mm -hmm. it doesn't tell you how long it's going to last. <laughs> That's correct. So sometimes you have, may have noticed food labels aren't entirely clear. 
in terms of the information. And part of the challenge is you can't fit all of the information that's important on a food label. So companies often do significant amounts of research to ask what should be on that label and what's important. I mentioned to you the first key aspect of our Food Science and Technology Center, which is student education. The second piece is the Consumer Insights Research Laboratory. And in that area, not only do we do taste testing of foods, which lots of people love to do, but we also can ask questions about message testing. If you sell a product or produce a product with a particular label, is that label effective at, a, at communicating the nutritional information, food safety limitations, and other key benefits or limitations of using that food product. So we can, in addition to taste testing, also do message testing with companies to get uh, some key answers to market research questions. I mean, that's great, because I also know in, to the beer drinkers of the world, they came out and now everything's fresh. So we, I figured when I first started drinking beer, it must not have been fresh because they never marketed it as fresh. As fresh. It could have been sitting there for a year or two. We have local microbreweries. We also have lo larger breweries that are still regional in aspect. We have a variety of those in Pennsylvania and surrounding states. And so the marketing or message testing that you're referring to is a marketing tool that's used to refer to the regional access um, for a particular product. And by the way, we've had quite a few questions and requests for taste testing of beer and other similar products. Well, that's perfect for a <laughs> university. But then you'd also be able to get into the science behind all that, that gigantic industry then too. Absolutely. Um, the third piece to the story here, in addition to our education for students, um, the Consumer Insights Research Laboratory, where we are working um, on taste testing and have a student, ex what we call an experiential learning student training program, where they actually come in, they're paid positions for students. This summer, I currently have six student staff, an intern, and a full-time research coordinator. That's a graduate of Harrisburg University. And those students are learning in a real-world setting how sensory science or consumer testing supports every step of the industry pathway. So our third aspect of the lab is to support economic development of food companies and other businesses in the region that may be interested in market testing a new product or existing product. We have a laboratory set up with individual test stations, the ability to record consumer responses when they give us feedback. And so we can use these test stations not only to do taste testing of food products, but we can measure or assess people's feedback to a new website. Um, we can assess their feedback to a new um, software product or platform or commercials that are developed by an advertising company to narrow down before they go on a national campaign or a national market test which ones have the best value for their investment. So we can narrow the field down to a short list for companies who are developing products and market plans for those appropriate products. Now I'm a veteran of chocolate world, so I know mm -hmm. exactly how chocolate's made for the Hershey company, but I also know so many friends work in their research and development that's mm -hmm. so sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Now is that something that you're trying to also duplicate, like Hershey has that sophistication, but get it out into other industries and the ag industry in, itself, in and of itself? That is a great question, and that leads me back to uh, another opportunity to support uh, a partnership that we have developed with the Hershey Company. The Consumer Insights Research Laboratory, which is a part of um, the Food Science and Technology Center, was actually made possible by a generous gift from the Hershey Company. And as a part of that, we are training with them and learning from them the expertise and knowledge that they have in the area of consumer research. Um, we're able also to begin to bring in other es experts, subject matter experts in the field, to begin to pass that knowledge on to companies that may be too small to have their own in-house departments or even single individuals who are responsible for this type of testing. So we're really excited to be able to support the local economy in this way. We've had a large response to the Sensory Science Research Lab and also to the professional development training component that we have as a part of our education initiative. Uh, this year, for example, we have eight professional development trainings scheduled, and we're also visiting with companies about developing customized training solutions for companies at site on their location. So we're thrilled to be able to 
provide that niche um, uh, opportunity and meet those needs uh, with the food companies in the region. As you know, the food industry is a significant one, not only in Pennsylvania, but in the Northeast area. States like Maryland, Virginia, New Jersey, Delaware, New York, all have significant numbers of companies that support that farm-to-table continuum. Renee, thanks for uh -huh. joining us. Thank you. An exciting program. Kelly Lewis will be right back after this break.